Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMDF, the UK Met Office run, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office precipitation and temperature look ahead for the next five days. Now of course over the last few days we have been looking at colder weather in and around the Christmas period and that is continuing on these runs and what else is continuing? The uncertainty. Now, yesterday's runs, we did see models flip-flopping. Last night's runs came out, and we thought, potentially, it was trending milder. But then this morning's runs came out, and as we'll see in this video, some are trending much colder once again. So, we can't say exactly what we're going to be seeing, even by the end of this working week, Friday, Saturday time. We can't be really, we don't really have a, a decisive answer to what even the temperatures or precipitation will be like really as the models really are struggling with this blocking pattern as we we'll see in this video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the links in the description so we do have a look at the latest gfs see how it does um sort of develop this block you can see the blocking head stalls greenland over the next day and we see a big greenland block develop however we've got low pressure in the atlantic trying to bring up a southwesterly wind and that does control the weather until around Thursday, Friday time, where cold air from that block starts to collide with it. Now, yesterday, we were seeing from the GFS, especially in its evening runs, the low pressure being much more progressive and it pushing in much milder air. However, for Christmas Day, you can see that low pressure is much weaker and is further southwards. And we're pulling in a south uh, to southeast, we're pulling a bit of a south to southeasterly wind. Now, to the north of that, we've got bitterly cold air. And you can see where that line is, we're going to be seeing heavy snowfall, low pressure bumping into colder air. And this line yesterday was over Scotland and to the north of Scotland in some scenarios. Now it's shifted much further southwards. And we'll have a look at the precipitation charts in a minute. And you'll see that even some areas into central southern England see snow throughout late hours of Christmas Day into Christmas uh, into the Boxing Day. You can see as it moves through, that cold air sinks southwards through Boxing Day, and we see cold air for the whole of the UK by Monday the 27th, with low pressure running to our south. Again, that could bring more snow, depending on its exact track, of course. Now, beyond that, we stay in a cold, northerly flow. Higher pressure is sinking over the top of the UK, so things turn a bit drier. Really cold and frosty, though. And by day 10, we're starting to bring in a milder southwesterly flow. But I would not look anything into that at this stage. Because the amount of uncertainty we have at sort of five days, there's no way the models are correct at 10 days. So I would take all of this with a pinch of salt beyond seven days at this stage. We have a decent idea generally what the pressure chart's going to be, but no idea on what the air mass type exactly is going to be because it's such fine margins. But beyond, beyond day 10, it goes mild southwesterly winds and eventually into a flat westerly. However, as I said, the models can't decide for the next five to six days. So I doubt they have any idea what's happening at 10 days or beyond that. Now, if we do have a look at the precipitation, uh, okay, this is the same run. You can see generally things are quite dry at the moment. It's quite cloudy and there should be some sunshine moving through over the next day or so. As we head forward towards Wednesday and Thursday, we start to see rain push up from the southwest. Initially turning to snow across parts of Scotland, but most areas it's generally rain because it's quite mild. However, as we head through Christmas Eve, you can see that, that melt rain really makes quite far northwards and milder air for the whole country. And then through Christmas Eve, more heavier rain into the south, but we start to see the pushback by the block. Early hours of Christmas Day, heavy snowfall across parts of northern England and Scotland as well. And that band of rain pushing into that snow readily turns to snow across parts of northern England, the northwest, Wales, East Anglia and the Midlands. And as we head through the evening of Christmas Day, turns more to snow, even to central areas, into southern areas, the London area potentially, throughout the early hours of Boxing Day. So, complete change, complete contradiction to what we were seeing yesterday from the GFS run. Um, and we'll see at the end of the video, the ECMWF was one of the um, colder runs earlier yesterday, so was the UK Met Office run, and they've gone milder today. So the models are just flip-flopping, so I can't, this is guaranteed not to play out exactly like this, unless the GFS really has finally caught on to one solution, is going to go with it, but at this stage it is a solution of course, but 
yeah, we'll have to see how it does play out. And beyond that, generally, we go into a northeasterly flow, bitterly cold air moving in, snow showers packing to the east, and generally things look pretty um, dry beyond that, though, as we head into the middle of the week with much more frosty, coldy, con colder conditions. And then potentially towards day 10, we see some heavy frontal snowfall, but it will be a transition to much milder temperatures behind it. Now, if we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. The GM actually goes along with the GFS today, um, and we'll see how it does, um, it does sort of evolve. You can see the low pressure moving in, trying to bring up southerly winds. And as we're towards Christmas Day, you can see, once again, that low is much further southwards than we saw yesterday on some of the runs. Heads further south, um, for the southeast as well, and we generally see um, easterly winds, and we continue with that pattern before day 10, we start to bring in southwesterlies. But as I said... Can't believe anything up to day five, day six at this stage with the models. So day 10 really is relevant. If we do have a look at the air mass, so you can see generally mild at the moment, uh, but chilly at the surface with an inversion. And then as we head towards Christmas Day, you see that much colder air digging in from the north, slightly further northwards than on the GFS, and it takes slightly longer to head southwards. So it wouldn't be readily turned into snow as much on the GM before we stay in that very cold air mass before milder conditions move in around the 29th, 30th of, no of December. Now, if we do have a look at the precipitation charts for the GM, you can see generally things are dry at the moment. As we later this week, you start to see rain pushing in from the southwest, turning to snow of the high ground of Scotland, and more rain and general precipitation moving in for the 23rd. And Christmas Eve, more rain pushing in. Readily, though, turning to snow across northern Scotland, uh, sorry, northern England, southern Scotland, and that band will sink southwards turning it to snow more widely, but eventually the precipitation does run out, and most areas are in a northeasterly flow, with areas of showers um, and snow moving in as well um, on that northeasterly wind before things turn drier, and then potentially some more frontal snowfall, similar to the GFS. Beyond that, so GM and GFS are very similar. GFS throwing a bit more snow around the Christmas Day um, to, uh, to Boxing Day period, but those sort of issues are normally the ones we're trying to resolve at this stage. But as we'll see with the ECDF and the UK Met Office run in a minute, they're showing something vastly different. So we do have a look at the ECMWF. As I said, we do generally have little things to iron out at five, six, seven days. Normally, exact position of air masses, maybe where the snow line is, things we would decipher with the GFS and the GM at the moment. But the ECMWF is vastly different and we really will have to see what it goes for on its 12z run now you can see the southerly wind for 23rd but all the runs are showing but the ecmwf doesn't let out we remain with a south to southwesterly wind milder air for all and beyond that we see no colder spell at all maybe by day 10 we're good into a bit, a bit of a more northerly wind but nothing no cold weather in around the Christmas period at all, with southwesterly winds, um, which is bizarre, I must say, um, showing absolutely nothing. So I do suspect the Easter Day is an outlier, but you can't rule out. We're still we're only five, six, seven days away. So one of these or some of these models have got it drastically wrong, um, all due to the forecasting, the blocking. So yeah, we'll have to see at this stage though. Definitely does look like there is snow potential around Christmas Day, Boxing Day. Eastern Death will be on the, the much milder end of the spectrum. Majority of the models and the ensembles are showing that cold air moving in. But getting as far as southern England, like the GFS does, we'll have to see really how that does play out. Now, if we do have a look at the Eastern Death, yeah, uh, sorry, the UK Met Office run, you'll see again how this is vastly different. We do start to bring in... Um, south southerly winds by the 23rd, and then that cold red tries to move in, but we stay with the southwesterly wind. And right towards the end of the run, we're in a southerly wind at day seven, milder southwesterly wind, no snow at all. With that cold air well to our north and northeast. So, once again, another bizarre run, and I have no idea why it is playing out like that. And there's this much disparity between the models. Of course, it's to do with the blocking and how they're resolving it. But it is truly bizarre how large the differences are. Only five, six, seven days away. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see how there is the uncertainty reflected in the ensembles, especially for London. 
you can see in sort of five or six days, there are certain runs staying very mild, around five degrees at 50 HPA, maybe just a tad colder. Others are bitterly cold, down to minus 10 for 25th into 26th. And there are quite a few. There's massive, massive spread. And as we continue beyond that, the majority go cold at some stage, with the average getting down to close to minus 5, but still massive uncertainty. And the thing is, it's backtracked. The midnight run was much more certain on much colder conditions but for most of the ensemble members, whereas the 6Z has much more spread. So as I said, you cannot rely on one of these models at this stage. There's so much uncertainty in play. They have to look at all the models, all the ensemble members, and try and decipher it. At this stage, though, I do favour the colder solution. I do think that will come off, uh, at least for a period of time, whether it is Boxing Day and beyond, or whether we do see the colder conditions move through for Christmas Day. I do think we'll see something colder with this block. Um, I do think that the models are sort of under-forecasting it at this stage. So, yeah, we'll have to see how it does play. And in the longer term, still so much scatter, and that's why I say just ignore any charts beyond sort of day seven at this stage, beyond sort of the 27th, 28th of December, considering the models can't even decipher what's going to be happening on Christmas Day at this stage. Truly, truly bizarre. Glasgow, however, for the Norfords, is a little bit more resolved with colder conditions looking quite likely through Christmas Day. It's around the 28th, 29th of December. Still some real mild outliers, maybe five, six, seven, eight models, but about two thirds are, uh, to three quarters are going for much colder conditions. So it, that's why I say those milder runs that are bringing up much milder conditions from the south are the outliers. There are some that show milder conditions for London, but those are ones where the cold air mass doesn't quite move through in time, and that's why I suspect they are going um, a bit milder. And we'll see those sort of even, uh, sort of eradicated soon once the models decide exactly where that air mass is going to um, sort of hold. One thing, though, it is looking definite is precipitation will increase with much more rain and probably some snow. And if we have a look at the snow depth spike, you can see quite a lot for Glasgow, especially around the Christmas period and beyond into the new year as well. So definitely does look like there will be some snow potential around over the next few weeks. Um, and definitely does look like there will be some snow. Um, oh, zoomed in there for a second. Uh, so if we do now have a look at the UK Met Office run, again, this will be similar to the twelve, uh, so the midday, midnight run of the UK Met Office run we saw. So it's the same model, but it's a slightly different resolution. So we'll have to see what it does show um, on the precipitation. And you can see generally, uh, really quite cloudy and dry though, over the next couple of days. And then as we head towards Wednesday, rain moving up from the southwest, potentially turning a bit to snow of the Scottish mountains, but nothing too substantial for the 24th. We start to see snow across Scotland um, in a few showers. And by Christmas Day, early hours of Christmas Day, we do start to see the hints of uh, some colder air in the north, but still milder air in the south. And if we do have a look at the uh, 850 HP temperatures, you can see that colder air is just to our north. So that UK Met Office 12Z, uh, so midnight run, sorry, is definitely an outlier. You can see that cold air is sinking southwards. How far south it does get will decide how quickly it will turn cold. But you can see here that that cold air is definitely sinking southwards. And, and that midnight run we saw was definitely an outlier. Um, so, yeah, uh, it does look like it, the UK Met Office runs from the 3 o'clock run, with the high-resolution run, is going for that sinking of cold air sort of scenario. Now, if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can, can see today, temperatures, chilly, 5 or 6 degrees, colder in the inversion, in a few spots with more fog. And as we head for, for the next few days, as we head towards Tuesday, you can see once again, chilly, 3 or 4 degrees. But by Wednesday, early hours will be chilly once again, well below freezing for many. But by Wednesday afternoon, we start to see temperatures rise up from the southwest, 11 or 12 degrees. But for many areas in the north and the east, low single digits, if not around freezing. And by um, Wednesday night into Thursday, all areas start to get into the milder air. So by Thursday afternoon, 11 or 12 degrees. And by Friday, Christmas Eve, the north, really quite chilly, around freezing or a couple of degrees above freezing. 
in the south six or seven degrees and by the early hours of saturday christmas day bitterly cold in the north around freezing or below freezing but in the south four five six degrees so we'll have to see how that air mass does move through it is still all up for grabs over the next few days christmas day we could be seeing some snow even into parts of england it's the midlands southern england's going to be a very big stretch at this stage it is still a scenario it's not disappeared from the models but it's not really increasing within especially the ensembles so I doubt it will come off, but we can't rule it out at this stage. The models really are struggling with this, um, and we have for the last sort of, three or four days in the models just flip-flopping all around um, and not really resolving much. So we'll have to see how it does play. I definitely do think the next day or two it is going to just flip, and suddenly all the models from maybe the 12Z or the Midnight Run will all go for the same scenario, and we can finally say the models have sort of converged on a scenario um, and we'll have to see whether that's this evening, maybe, or tomorrow morning, at least the next 24 hours. It must come out with this scenario, or we are going to be two or three days away um, with big, big disparity, which I don't think is going to happen. We're going to see this resolve um, very, very soon. So make sure you stay tuned for the videos and, of course, the Met Office warnings as well. So do expect there will be some ice and maybe snow warnings over the next week. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.